we have Valentin Timofeyev, who is going to talk to us about managing dependencies of Python pipelines. Uh, hey everyone, uh, my name is Valentin. I have been an engineer at uh, Google uh, working on Apache Beam and uh, Google Cloud Dataflow for last several years. And um, today I'm going to be talking about um, managing pipeline uh, dependencies in Python SDK. I don't uh, write a lot of pipelines, but I do debug a fair, fair bit of pipelines. and. Um, I'll be just sharing some of my observation, what I know, uh, what is possible, what works, and I would be uh, glad to hear any feedback from the real users of Apache Beam, what works in practice and what doesn't work in practice and what is painful um, in particular. So let's get started. When we are talking about managing dependencies, uh, there are two aspects that uh, come to mind. One is is expressing what your pipeline needs. And the second aspect is to control what the pipeline is actually using. Um, a pipeline may need um, a framework or um, an additional Python package or some uh, Linux uh, software that needs to be installed on the workers. Or maybe you would like to use an existing uh, base image built, for example, for data processing on GPU. and. Uh, you want to start with that and uh, run your pipeline in that kind of environment. Um, the controlling aspect is to make sure that the environments where your pipeline launches and runs are reproducible and uh, compatible and observable, meaning that if you recreate them, you will have the same environments that you uh, started with. So um, we need to uh, pay particular attention to the fact that we have two environments to, <clears throat> to manage. One environment is the pipeline launch environment. This is where you uh, run the pipeline and the SDK translates your pipeline into a runner independent representation and submits it to the runner for execution, which uh, takes a pipeline graph and translates it into a proto file where your transform become um, translated in a Beam Runner API representation, and uh, the do funds become uh, serialized into a binary payload that is then sent over the wire. So this translation happens in the launch environment, and then in the um, in addition to the launch environment, sometimes people have a dev environment, which is what they use to iterate on the pipeline during development. And uh, the dev environment may have additional dependencies that are not necessarily are not necessary to run the pipeline in production. And uh, when I talk about the launch environment, I mean the environment uh, that uh, people use to actually launch the production pipelines. Uh, typically, you would want to keep uh, dependencies in that environment to a minimum. In fact, you could even uninstall some of the Beam dependencies that are not directly relevant uh, for your pipeline. For example, some I.O. connectors, if you don't use them, you don't really need them uh, in your uh, job submission environment uh, if they get in the way. Um, so the runtime environment is where your the bulk of your processing happens. So uh, my perspective is uh, biased towards uh, Dataflow Runner because uh, I'm more familiar with it. And in Dataflow, this environment looks uh, roughly like uh, so. We have a, a worker VM. Then this VM starts um, multiple containers. One of them is the Beam SDK container. And the Beam SDK container launches the process called uh, the uh, SDK, SDK worker. And then that, that's, that's the Python process that um, takes the runner API representation and then decodes it or deserializes it into a Python function, which uh, then does uh, the bulk of processing. So here we have a sample um, map that uh, just appends uh, one counter to a string. And uh, the pipeline runtime environment in this case is, is that read the Beam SDK Docker container in which this Python process runs. So unlike 
the launch environment, the runtime environment is created by the runner, but it is configurable by the user via pipeline options. So there is a web page that documents various modifications you can make uh, to uh, pipeline dependencies, such as uh, specifying the requirements file, uh, which you can use to list uh, several packages that need to be installed uh, on the workers before the workers start. So uh, the um, caveats for requirements file is when you specify the requirements file, we, uh, during the pipeline submission, SDK first downloads the packages listed in the requirements file locally into a cache folder, and then the entire cache directory is uh, staged to the uh, workers during the pipeline submission. So that means uh, on the workers, you may not necessarily need to have a um, access to PyPy because the packages have been staged, but uh, there is this cost of uh, staging the dependencies from your uh, launch environment that you will be um, uploading the libraries, which may potentially be big. For example, TensorFlow can be as much as 500 megabytes. If uh, you don't like that, you can specify to skip uh, the requirements cache. And in that case, we will just stage the requirements file, but uh, we won't uh, stage the dependencies. And uh, you can also check uh, what the default uh, container image already has and uh, the packages that you uh, have uh, for uh, have inside the container image, you don't need to stage them. Uh, we publish that uh, for uh, data flow worker containers and you can also find that information in uh, Beam SDK containers if you look at the uh, base image requirements files that I checked in uh, the repo and you can find them for every Beam release. Uh, the other option to customize is the extra package option. This is something you can use to stage one additional Python package uh, to the workers, uh, which works if you, for example, have a private library that is not available in PyPy, but uh, you have an SDist or a binary distribution available locally that you would like to provision into your runtime environment. Finally, you can uh, configure your pipeline uh, as, a, as also a Python package and um, supply it using the setup file pipeline option. This works well if um, or you, you would use this option if you have multiple files uh, that um, uh, comprise your workflow. Um, there are a couple of additional advantages what you can use with this uh, option, uh, such as uh, you can configure your uh, setup uh, dot .py uh, for your pipeline package to, for example, run arbitrary commands on the worker at runtime. And you can install uh, Linux packages, for example, and um, when you package your pipeline in this uh, way, you don't need to save uh, the uh, main session. Um, uh, so a caveat that in this case, nothing is uh, staged except for the, uh, uh, the, the pipeline package itself. Uh, the dependencies that uh, you define in setup.py are not going to be staged. Now, this is the uh, ultimate uh, customization option, uh, which uh, appeared um, more recent than the other ones. Uh, you can now uh, control the uh, container image in which uh, the SDK worker executes. and. Uh, there you basically can have your own Docker file and you can pre-install all the packages you need, the Python packages or Linux packages. You can uh, start a side process by modifying uh, the entry point. You may wish to use a custom base image for your container, not necessarily the beam provided base image. And um, uh, some caveats for that is, uh, so currently there are some rough edges uh, with data flow uh, for large containers. If you have a, a large image, uh, you need to specify additional flags. Uh, otherwise, your uh, VM may uh, run out of space or will not be able to launch. So the way how you can use the custom base image, you basically take uh, any, uh, any uh, Linux image uh, and um, 
that has Python, you install Beam SDK, you install any Python packages you need there, and then finally at the very end you add a Beam entry point which you can take from the officially released Apache Beam images and you get an image that implements the Beam uh, SDK container con contract. Uh, a, few, a few caveats here. Uh, some users reported frictions on Ubuntu systems, uh, such that um, uh, in Ubuntu the Python command does not resolve to Python 3, while we expect uh, that images have uh, a um, Python that a Python command that you can run and get access to the interpreter. So. Uh, you can have some workarounds, and we're going to fix it in a uh, future version. Um, another, another thing for Ubuntu, it does not have a virtual environment dependency by default, so you may need to install it in your custom image because uh, Beam uh, SDK container entry point requires that. Whenever you uh, deal with uh, custom containers, you also need to make sure that your launch environment and your runtime environment are compatible. We're going to talk about it uh, later in the talk. Another way to customize your pipeline execution is uh, specify an SDK location. This is something that you would do if you wanted to supply a custom SDK. Um, maybe you want to use the SDK built from GitHub uh, master because um, there is a fix that you are waiting for, or maybe you have a patch that you have contributed to the repo, but you want to backport that patch to an older released SDK, and we don't really release patch releases these days, so you can do that yourself. And uh, it's super easy to build uh, Beam uh, from sources. There are just those four commands that you need to run, and then you can supply a custom SDK in the SDK location flag. Um, Beam by default stages uh, the SDK to the worker, so you can disable that behavior if you specify SDK location equals container. That means that uh, the pipeline will use the version of Beam SDK that, that is already installed in the Beam container. Okay, so now we uh, go to the second section, which is controlling what your pipeline uses. So. One question is why, uh, what are we trying to control here? So this, these are real things that uh, have happened in uh, customer cases. For example, a customer doesn't make any changes, but uh, suddenly pipeline fails to start. Or uh, people upgrade to the new version of uh, Apache Beam and then the pipeline starts to crash and they attribute it to the new Beam release, uh, while the actual cause of failure is the changes, like subtle changes in the dependencies uh, that uh, uh, have changed in the runtime environment. Another possible issue that also has happened, um, if uh, and may happen actually in the future, especially if you are using old SDKs, uh, because at some point, uh, we were not very careful about the dependency management in the Beam library, and uh, installing Beam required a PIP uh, dependency resolution. So certain packages in our dependency chain may have releases that would make it difficult for PIP uh, to resolve uh, what dependencies you need to install when you are installing Apache Beam. Um, if you cannot uh, recreate a virtual environment in a reproducible manner, you uh, may have troubles even installing Beam. Uh, finally, sometimes uh, people encounter errors that, oh, I can run the pipeline locally in a direct runner, but when I try to run it in a remote runner, it fails with uh, errors like module not found or attribute error, which signal that some dependencies uh, are required for the pipeline, but they are not available on the workers. So what are the goals of um, managing this sort of situation? So um, of course, like when the pipeline is working, one incentive uh, people have is to 
not not touch anything. But uh, I would say that it's good to make changes. It's good to upgrade, but uh, it's uh, also good to do it on your own terms. So when you decide that you want to make upgrades to your environment, you make the changes instead of changes happening because uh, there is a release in some downstream dependency that maybe you don't even care about and you don't control uh, how the change affects your environment. The other uh, thing is uh, you want to try to make your launch environment and your runtime environment reproducible and um, whenever there are changes have visibility into what uh, has changed. Um, and it's very important for the launch environment and the runtime environment to be compatible. More on that later. Um, so how to make uh, reproducible environments? Uh, there are various tools in the uh, Python ecosystem for creating reproducible environments, such as using requirements files or constraint files or uh, uh, tools uh, like uh, pip anvil poetry or pip tools provide uh, uh, this approach where you define um, top level requirements and then these libraries generate a log file with a list of transitive requirements for the dependencies that uh, you need and then they can create virtual environments where you where each dependency is installed uh, from the version specified in the log file um, then one other option is you can use Docker container images. If you have a, a container image with a, a Python environment created there, then every time you uh, create a container from this image, you will generally have a reproducible environment. Um, so how does this uh, uh, apply apply to us? So um, let's recall that in launch environment uh, we have a translation of the pipeline that is uh, happening before the job is submitted to the runner. Um, and then uh, the runner deserializes the uh, pickled, uh, the pickled uh, or serialized pipeline representation. It's um, important for, uh, it's important uh, to have reproducible environment so that whenever you rerun the pipeline, uh, the representation of your pipeline and the way it will be deserialized uh, on the workers will, will be the same unless you decide to make changes. Um, uh, so uh, we're going to talk about launch environment and the runtime environment. Uh, for launch environment, what are the, some of the things uh, we can do? Um, this is just an example of using one of the uh, tools I mentioned before, which is uh, constraints. If you install Apache Beam in a clean environment, such installation typically will not be reproducible. Uh, in most cases, it won't be a problem. But if you want it to be actually reproducible, you can use a constraint file. And um, uh, we publish dependencies of uh, Beam containers in Beam repo, and you can install Beam using a constraint file, which will make sure that uh, all dependencies you have locally match the dependencies provided in the Beam container. Then Dataflow users can use this functionality called the Flex Templates, which allow, basically Flex Templates provides a way to containerize your pipeline launch environment <coughs> in, in a Docker container. So let's go further. All right. So runtime environments. Uh, it's a little bit uh, hard to see. Oh, actually, you can see it. Well, um, there are several things that happen between the time when you start the pipeline and your pipeline starts doing uh, something useful, uh, which is typically what you see when you launch the pipeline. You see this phrase that says, Workers uh, have started successfully. I'm saying uh, launching pipeline on data flow. Um, that just means that the uh, first uh, VM has started, but then this VM goes through the boot sequence. And uh, during this boot sequence, you stage uh, the 
uh, you download the staged artifacts, create a virtual environment, and then install all the dependencies that you have specified for your pipeline. You install SDK if container did not have the SDK already. You install the requirements file, you install the extra packages, you install the uh, pipeline workflow, and then finally you, uh, ins you, you launch the Python process, and um, then um, SDK is initialized, ready to work, and first work request happens, and then you get this message that all workers have started and uh, um, have finished the startup processes and began to receive work requests. So this is when your workers actually have successfully finished the, um, the boot up uh, process. If you don't see this, that means uh, something is wrong in the boot sequence and you need to investigate. So uh, the mo most of the non-determinism that uh, you may experience in your runtime environment comes from uh, installation of uh, Python dependencies at runtime. And uh, if you want to have control over your runtime environment, you need to reduce the non-determinism there. So um, specifically in this, in this portion, what can you do to uh, make the environments more reproducible? Uh, you, can, um, you can use the container, uh, the custom um, container where you pre-install all your requirements, or uh, you, you can also use the functionality called the pre-building uh, container images, I think I have another slide on that, but uh, how, how can you tell if your environment is reproducible or not? Uh, one way to see if uh, can your pipeline run without access to the um, repositories with uh, dependencies, such as PyPy, for example, and to check that you can turn off the internet uh, uh, access on the workers. Um, then you can ask yourself, if I recreate this environment, will it have the same dependencies? If not, uh, do I have any visibility into what has changed? Um, and I think uh, dependencies is a case when micromanaging may be uh, a good thing, and uh, I would definitely encourage that. Um, so. Uh, how to achieve this uh, reproducible configuration? Yeah, you can use the container image, or uh, you can also specify exhaustive list of requirements files. You can uh, use the container pre-building uh, functionality that basically executes uh, this portion of the workflow once before your pipeline starts, and then reuses this container on all the workers that uh, data flow uh, starts during the execution, uh, one thing you can do is you can take the image that was pre-built and uh, use it later uh, Use it later in uh, follow-up pipeline runs as long as your dependencies haven't changed. <clears throat> this is a lightweight way of uh, creating a reproducible custom container um, image. Then the most important thing is uh, are the environments compatible and uh, uh, the compatibility here means that when you have a serialized uh, payload that you created in your launch environment, it's very important that you will be able to deserialize it in equivalent form in your runtime environment. For that, uh, the serializer library must match. Uh, ideally, the protobuf library must be compatible or match and uh, the Apache Beam and Python version must match. Uh, in uh, latest versions of Beam, we enforce this uh, in the checks. And then if you, obviously, if you have uh, some um, dependencies of your pipelines, you need to provision them on the workers. All right, so um, how do you know if your environments are compatible? Well, you can um, make them reproducible and uh, uh, compares the dependencies, uh, or better, you can eliminate the dependencies by construction. And um, one way to do that is to use the same uh, base image uh, for the launch environment and runtime environment. And uh, Dataflow actually allows you to do that with the flex template functionality. You can build uh, flex templates from a custom container image, or you can take a um, data flow template image and make a custom container from the data flow template image that you are using uh, and you just adjust the entry points 
And uh, yeah, similar consideration will need to be made if you use um, expansion for cross-language transforms because you would want to expand your uh, transforms in the same environment where it will run on the workers. I'm happy to answer questions uh, in the room.